wherever we can set up, we shall try and read. Hi guys, this is Connie, Ivy Bear, hanging out there, and we're going to continue reading another segment of Connie Reads Brian's Return. I think we're on chapter three. Yes, we are. Police came to the pizza place. They called an ambulance and took Carl to the hospital, where it was found that the skin around his eyes was severely bruised, as were his ribs and his stomach. Though it was not really necessary, they kept him in the hospital overnight for observation, which made his condition, which made his condition seem much more severe than it was. The police handcuffed Brian and put him in the back seat of the car while they interviewed witnesses. Susan came to the car, but the police pulled her away. No talking, they told her. No talking to the boy. But he didn't do anything wrong. Carl attacked him. Brian was just no talking to the boy. In a short time, the police came back and removed the handcuffs, but they wouldn't let Brian go. Instead, they drove him home, and he had the unpleasant experience of having police with him when his mother opened the door. She was thin and dressed for work in her real estate blazer. Brian? What? There was a fight at Mackey's Pizza. Your boy was beating up on another boy. Brian? Is that true? Brian said nothing. Brian, is that true? She repeated. Were you fighting? He looked at his mother. He thought briefly of trying to tell her the truth. That it had been the Brian she knew, but a different... Uh, that it hadn't been the Brian she knew, but a different one. A totally different person. It hadn't been a fight, but an automatic reaction. It hadn't happened because it hadn't been him. It had been some kind of animal. A boy animal. No, an animal boy. I am animal boy, he thought, and tried not to smile. It is most definitely not funny. He shook his head. I know. I didn't mean it's funny. I don't know exactly what happened. Did you fight? Like the policeman says? He thought for a moment. I was reacting, protecting myself. The boy was beaten senseless, the policeman said. He didn't know his name. He attacked me. We were told several versions, the policeman said to Brian's mother. Apparently they were fighting over a girl. A girl? Brian looked at, She looked at Brian. You have a girl? Brian shook, her head, shook his head. No, it wasn't that way at all. I was coming in the door and he slammed at the door open and Susan was knocked down and he hit me and I... But they didn't hear him. Even if they had listened, they wouldn't have heard him. Not really. They would never understand him. So he shrugged and played dumb and let them think what they wanted. It didn't matter because he was starting to understand it now, was starting to see what had to happen, what he needed to do. I know someone, a counselor, the policeman said. He's a retired cops and works with boys. I'll give you his name. The policeman took out a notebook and wrote a name and number on a page, tore it out, and gave it to Brian's mother. Here, call him and he can talk to your boy. Animal boy, thought Brian. Not boy, animal boy. But he didn't smile. Just a second. We got two, two sentences. Maybe he can straighten him out. Not unless he can see into my heart. Brian thought. And that's the end of chapter three. It was short and sweet and to the point. Be careful with that and enjoy, please, and thank you. I'll see you for the next chapter.